Hi, I'm Chris Anderson at the EU Uptech Lab, and today we'll discuss the deep cover family of secure authenticators from Maxim. Device and peripheral authentication is used to protect both the end user and the original equipment manufacturer. By ensuring peripherals are genuine and not clones or other counterfeits, the end user knows that the device meets the quality, performance, and safety criteria guaranteed by the manufacturer. Authentication also protects a company's IP and revenue stream by making it more difficult to clone devices and giving manufacturers the ability to lock out third-party peripherals. The Maxim Deep Cover family is designed to be very secure while being simple to implement. The security scheme consists of a host-side coprocessor and an authenticator IC that resides on the peripheral. The host microcontroller sends a random challenge to both the coprocessor and the authenticator. Each computes a SHA-256 message authentication code that is compared. As long as the codes match, the peripheral is considered authentic. This architecture removes the responsibility of hosting and securing the secret from the host microcontroller and also prevents many of the more common hacking strategies, such as a man-in-the-middle attack. Everything that needs to be secured is secured within the DeepCover products, and Maxim has gone to great lengths at the CMOS level in terms of device layout and routing to prevent would-be hackers from being able to physically examine the products and produce clones or other workarounds. Maxim sent me various demo sticks to illustrate the functionality of their DeepCover family. Two of them use SHA-2 while the other uses elliptic curve DSA, and there are options for one wire or I2C communications. If you're not sure what you need, Maxim has a pretty nice authentication advisor website that walks you through the selection process based on your application as well as your design and manufacturing considerations. There is a full development kit as well, but it requires signing an NDA, and I think these demo sticks show the idea pretty clearly. They all show the same thing, so I'll just use this one, which uses the DS2465 SHA-2 coprocessor and the DS28E15 SHA-2 authenticator. As you can see, both ICs are very small, and the coprocessor also functions as an I2C to one wire bridge and can support multiple one wire authenticators on the same bus if the application requires it. Maxim one wire is unique in that the slave ICs do not use a VCC pin, only a single I.O. and ground pin, so the device is actually parasitically powered over the I.O. pin. There's also a host MCU, which is of course a Maxim device, but you can use MCUs from any vendor. I'm sure though that Maxim would be happy to sell you some MCUs as well. The USB connector is just for power, so I'll plug that in. And you'll see three LEDs blink, one for the host, then the coprocessor, then the authenticator. As you can see from the green LEDs, the device passes authentication. The process doesn't actually take this long, it's more on the order of a few milliseconds. If I take the authenticator portion off, the system immediately recognizes it's been removed and can respond accordingly. If I flip it over, there's another authenticator I see on the back. It's the same model, but it's programmed with a different secret, and so it fails authentication. The same failure will happen if I use an off-the-shelf authenticator, since in theory I wouldn't know what the OEM secret is to program in. As you can see, Maxim's deep cover family of secure authenticators provides robust protection against cloning and counterfeiting. They also ease implementation by offering SHA and ECDSA coprocessors with one wire master function. So if your application requires authentication, check out the deep cover family from Maxim.